Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and we're going to do another Venom Versus today. I figured I had a little bit more time after I recorded those last episodes to squeeze one more in before I have to go to work. So I went ahead and read or reread Nova number 7 here, which is actually Nova number 50 if you count like all three series that he's had. And if you add up all those issues, this is kind of the 50th issue of Nova. So I think they probably added like one or two issues on because this book did not really sell well when it first came out. Um, I like the character of Richard Ryder. I think he's a great character. Uh, but uh, but this book really never stuck with me. I remember trying it out, and again, like the Silver Sable one, I bought the first issue, and then I was like, okay, it was all right. And then like by issue three, I was like, yeah, I I can't, you know, with <laughs> I can't with money because at this point, comics they went up, they were up a dollar ninety nine or whatever, and I was still like in school at this point. I think I was in middle school, so I was like, uh, or maybe yeah, maybe it was middle school or maybe like early high school. But I was like, yeah, I can't keep up with these, so uh, so I'm gonna have to drop Nova. And then I did, and then like four issues later on the last issue, you know, his, uh, you know, Venom for, you know, appeared in it. And I, again, I don't know if that was them trying to get the sales up for that last issue for whatever reason. Uh, not, not that it mattered because they were ending it anyway, but uh, I don't know what the deal was. Or maybe it was just because Eric Larson, because Eric Larson wrote this. And so maybe it was just like, he was like, hey, I want to put Venom in before the series ends because, you know, I worked on that character after Todd McFarlane and I had, you know, I add the, the tongue to the character. So, um, you know, maybe I maybe it was just like something for Eric Larson, like a nostalgia thing where he's like, oh, I want to bring the character in and just have fun with it. Um, but this issue, it's like it's kind of all over the place because they do a lot because it's a final issue, and uh, and I think they it even feels a little thicker. But I think that's because they put this little Spider-Man short story in the middle of it for whatever reason. I think to promote that book uh, with Spider-Man and Mysterio or something. Uh, but uh, yeah, Nova Human Rocket number seven, and uh, this one, like I said, written by Eric Larson, picks up right where the last issue ended off. I think Joe Bennett does the um, does the artwork. Yes, he does. And uh, it picks up with the Red Ravens, where uh, Nova's trying to save Condor, so it like ends with that battle. And since we haven't talked about that before, I won't get into the details of that. Uh, but it's basically Nova trying to protect a guy named Condor, or, or you know, keep him imprisoned. And the Red Ravens are like trying to get up, like kill him and stuff. And there's like this whole thing. So Richard Ryder like fights him off and says like, "All right, guys, you know, go away, uh, leave him alone, you know, I, I, and I'll go my way, and uh, everyone can go home happy, and Condor can stay in jail." And they're like, "Fine, you know, we'll we'll continue this maybe another day. We'll, we'll try to you know blow off some steam." So basically, him, you know, Eric Larson wrapping up that story from the last issue, uh, trying to wrap it up in like two or three pages, and then you have uh, you know Richard Ryder, his suit, uh, you know, made by the Zendarians, actually morphs kind of like a uh, you know like a symbiote suit, so it actually morphs and and, and turns and you know melts. Away way and he has his regular clothes underneath but then he goes in and he runs into these uh, his friends that work at this like little coffee shop or whatever and one kid like is hanging out there and they're like watching something on the tv about uh the uh the i think is the gibbon or someone or the kangaroo is like they found out like the news found out that the kangaroo gave up being a villain and went into sports to play sports like professional sports and uh and they found out that he was really the kangaroo so they banned him from the league and then all leagues a minor league and major league uh baseball we're banning anyone with superpowers so no one could play. And then this kid gets into a big, you know, frenzy over it. And he says, hey, that's not fair. They're, you know, they're discriminating against a minority. You know, what, what's they, that's unconstitutional. They can't do that. And Richard Ryder's like, uh, yeah, as someone who has powers, I never thought to use them to play baseball. He goes, so he's like, I don't really care about it. It's like, it's not a political issue for Richard Ryder. He's like, I got a date anyway with the super hot chick I've been after since issue one. So hopefully I can, you know, I'm going to go work on that. And he's like, so Richard Ryder's just like, just the kind of character he was written as at this time, just a young guy with this power. And he's just like, and he's lost the power, I think like twice by this point. So he's just kind of like, I don't know. He just didn't really, he's like, ah, I don't see the point in getting into a debate over that. I'm just going to walk away. And so he goes and he just has this date, which is the most boring date ever. And he even says it. They're just staring at each other, watching paint dry. And then she goes, I do my own nails. And he just goes, oh, God. He's like, this is going to be the longest day ever. So apparently it was just like him working up to this relationship and try to get on this date. And then when it happened, he realized him and the girl had nothing in common. She was way out of his league. And then they just had nothing to say to each other. So it was kind of a funny moment page. But again, this was Eric Larson trying to wrap up everything. Uh, there's also Ginger, who is uh, Nova's ex-girlfriend, who was pregnant. And she, you know, from another guy. And uh, his, I think he died. Her husband died. And uh, now she has to sell her house to, like, pay bills. And then she's going to, she's so scared that she can't even keep herself going with, you know, without a house and with, you know, food 
and stuff that she's scared to even have the child. So she agrees to have the child and not get an abortion, but then also go and, uh, you know, give the kid up for adoption so it can find a great home uh, with someone who can raise a child the way that she would want the child to be raised in a better environment uh, because that she, she doesn't feel she can provide one. And uh, this was kind of touching stuff, but it was uh, also like Eric Larson just, you know, putting all these like threads in, but also putting all these like, you know, kind of political stuff, especially now, like people get into fights over these uh, conversations now big time. They did then a little bit too, but um, you know, it, it adds for interesting characters, I think, uh, in this storyline. So I got to give Eric a little bit of credit uh, with this. Uh, and so what ends up happening is Nova talks to his parents and says, hey, can Ginger, she doesn't have a place to live and she wants to raise, she wants to give this kid up for adoption, but maybe if we give her a better home, you know, so he's going, he's looking out for like this ex-girlfriend who he's become friends with. And he sets her up with a, a room in his old house uh, where his parents live. And he's like, and he kind of sells it to his parents. Like there'll be a little baby around that you can, you know, take care of and, you know, and help her with and stuff. And of course, like my mom, she was thrilled to become a grandparent. And so, uh, you know, when my brother had uh, his kid, so, or what, had my nephew and stuff. So I was like, yeah, I know that. I know that feeling, and I know you know parents love that stuff, and and they do. Like my my grandparents when I was born, same thing. My mom, you know, she was very young when she had me, and they were like, "We'll help you out. We'll take care of you, and help you in some in in these in any way that my mom needed it. Uh, watch me, you know, whatever whatever needed to be done." And uh, and then so that's what's happening here. So I was like, "All right, that's kind of cool." Like he's he helped her out. He helped her find a place to stay, and you know, and she's gonna try it out. She's gonna you know be with the kid, and she has support now, and she has a support system. And I was like, "All right, that's cool. That's." That's very superhero-ish, and it's a very real, everyday, you know, uh, kindness, too. Uh, so I like that. It made me like Richard Ryder more, and even rereading this, I was like, all right, that's cool. But then Richard's also trying to get his name out there. Everyone keeps calling him Starman and all these other things, and he's like, I'm Nova. So he's actually going to Marvel, so it's like gets very meta. He's going to Marvel to try to, like, get a comic book made on him or something so he can, you know, brand himself better. Um, and this is that little Spider-Man mini series, little mini comic I was talking about, um, and uh, yeah, so they just pop that in like in the middle of a lot of these books to kind of promote something. But so anyway, he's trying to do that. And then, you know, while they're having a lunch where like, you know, Nova's talking to the Marvel guys and like, hey, you could do this with me and you can do this for my story. And, uh, and they're like, didn't you have powers like and, and you lost them and then you got them again? How do we know you're not going to lose your powers again? Maybe that might affect the book. You know, if you lose your powers, maybe we, we don't want to do this. And they're going back and forth on that. And then in the middle of all this, I know you're like, where's Venom? Boom, Venom shows up. And Venom just full on attacks. And I actually like Joe Bennett's art on this one. That image is really great. And uh, yeah, so Venom shows up and he just starts beating the living crap out of Nova. And of course you're like, why? Like, why are you doing this? Why are you fighting Nova? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, you know, no, what did Nova do that's so bad? And, you know, Venom even says, I'm going to make you suffer for what you did. I can't believe what you did, blah, blah, blah. And Nova's like, I don't get it. So Nova takes him outside and says, dude, what's up? Like, why are we fighting? Why are you fighting me? What's going on? And he goes, yeah, you know that building that dropped a few weeks back, which happened in an earlier issue of Nova? And he's like, yeah. And he goes, and that lady you talked to? And, and Nova's like, yeah. And he goes, the Eddie Brock goes, yeah, that was my sister. He's like, I, and, and <laughs> Nova's like, what? He's like, she didn't have like tendrils and stuff. He's like, yeah, that was me, Eddie Brock. And he goes in the story. He's like, I'm Eddie Brock. I was a journalist. He basically gives up his whole life story. He's like, and he's like, I hate Spider-Man because he caught the real Sin Eater and that ruined my life. And then Nova's like, wait, so Spider-Man caught a bad guy? And he's to blame for, you know, the things that happened to you, or like your career getting ruined because you didn't check your facts. And it was like really cool because it was like in a meta way, uh, like for Eric Larson to point that out and have, you know, Venom, you know, have his hypocrisy thrown in his face a little bit. And, uh, you know, kind of like the opposite of when he did that to Silver Sable and them. So I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And like a little fun idea there. Um, so Nova's like, yeah, Spider-Man, so what, if Daredevil or Punisher, you know, did that, like, would you hate them as much as you hate Spider-Man? And, uh, and then Venom's like, shut up, shut up, and they start attacking each other again. But basically that, that was like the introduction, like, Venom was like, look, you, you, you dropped, nearly dropped a building on my sister, almost killed her, so, uh, I'm, I'm basically just gonna take you down. And meanwhile, we see this little robot watching out and that's because the reanimator is alive it's kind of like a herbie looking robot from fantastic four but that's kind of what reanimator did he took all these old costumes and robots and rebuilt them um so he's kind of in the background watching nova during all this but yeah so venom and him are getting into it venom's ready to kill nova and then they like i said they, they keep going with the banter back and forth eddie brock reveals himself he tells his whole story and nova just taunting him saying like dude it sounds like you're still the bad guy here i don't know what's going on and then this is something we brought up in a previous episode, but you had, uh, you know, uh, them falling. They flew up in the sky, and now they're free-falling down towards Earth, and Nova's, like, you know, getting control of his powers and, you know, leveling himself out and flying. And he's like, Venom, grab my hand. I'll help you. And Venom's like, screw you. I can make wings. And then, boom, he makes these big, long bat wings and uh, glides semi to safety but ends up falling into the water. 
And then he says, uh, hey, I'm going to get my revenge on you at some point. You and Spider-Man, you're going to pay. And then, boom, storyline's over. <laughs> like, he drops, you know, Venom falls, like, near, like, an island and cliffs and stuff. You know, they flew way out, you know, out in the ocean and stuff. So, uh, so yeah, so I don't, I don't know, you know, where in the continuity this rests or whatever, but... Uh, but, uh, you know, I guess Venom eventually gets back to San Francisco at this point. And then you have, uh, you know, him going back. Nova's going back to the Marvel guys and talking to them again. And then once again, they say, yeah, we thought about it. And it's true. You may lose your powers again. So we're I don't think we're going to do a comic with you because you may lose your powers for good next time. And we and then our book won't sell. So. Uh, so, yeah, we're sorry. So, again, another like meta nod to like this book ending and stuff and everything like that. So. Yeah, it was fun stuff, and then he goes back and has a conclusion with his friends, the kid who was like, hey, that's injustice, you know, to uh, discriminate against minorities, which, you know, people with superpowers, I guess, and uh, and they go back and they conclude that, and they talk over some things, and then, uh, you know, see Richard Ryder, he's a great guy, and he's uh, he talks about how he helped his ex-girlfriend, and how he, all these things, all these threads that Eric Larson uh, set up are all kind of paid off and wrapped up in this issue, and then, boom, you get your shot of the reanimator, so I guess, you know, Eric Larson was like, yeah, hey, if I ever get to come back to the book or do something with these characters again, you know, I want to set up a story for me to tell later on, uh, or or another writer to tell later on. And I don't know if that ever was picked up. I don't know if that Nova thread with the Reanimator was ever picked up or not. Um, but uh, yeah, but I know they did more Richard Ryder stuff. But I think a lot of it kind of retconned this. I don't remember what happened to Ginger or the kid. I can't remember any of that. Um, so if you guys know, let me know. Please educate me down below because I know of Nova and I've read a few books of his, like this one. Uh, but I I never followed up with him. I think the last, the last time I read him was in the Annihilation crossover, uh, which was Richard Ryder. And then I think I read like the first year's worth of that Sam uh, character, Sam, uh, written by Jeff Loeb. It was named after his son, I think. I read some of that, and then I read the Carnage story where Sam met Carnage during Axis. Uh, but other than that, I don't really know too much more about Richard Ryder. So if you have any information, let me know down below, because I have a ma I imagine he'll show up in a Marvel movie at some point um, with the, you know, the Nova Corps already being introduced and their world being decimated by you know Thanos. I wouldn't be surprised to see Nova at some point uh, in the future in the Marvel movies. So again, that's just what happened in that book. I'd love to know your thoughts. If you read it yourself, let me know. Did you pick up this Nova series? Do you remember the moment when his sister, I was trying to find that issue and I could, and I was like, oh, I have to order that on eBay. And I was like, eh, it's fine. I got the main issue here where they battle. So I figured I'll talk about it. But if you have any images you want to share uh, from that issue, you can you know hit me up on Instagram or uh, Twitter uh, at Venom Vlog at both of those and uh, follow me on there if you haven't already and we can continue our conversation either on one of those platforms or here on youtube you can just comment down below and let me know what you think thanks so much for watching my show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you in the future peace